everyone and welcome to another 31 day of horror horror review for this year 2018. Today is day number of this whole adventure and I hope you are having as much fun as I am. Today I'm actually going to be talking about two movies. This one was again on the 50 best horror movies you've never seen documentary and it is called When a Stranger Calls. It was originally made in 1979 and it stars a young Carol Kane who is this fabulous lady. You've probably seen her in a lot of movies, a lot of TV shows, and this is one of her, not first movies, but really a long time ago given that it's 1979. This movie was also remade in 2006 so we're going to be kind of comparing talking about both the movies since I watched them both. I wasn't able to locate this one on Netflix or Amazon but I did find a DVD copy that had both of these on it as an option so that's how I watched it. This movie does take inspiration from the Christmas horror Black Christmas and it definitely had influences into Wes Craven's Scream. I mean there's a phone situation there too. What's your favorite scary movie? If you've ever been a babysitter and that's what I did when I was younger this movie kind of I didn't know this was a movie. It was like an urban legend where I grew up about somebody calling while you're babysitting about checking on the children. Now I know where that came from and it's really no cool because it, it scared me a lot. Now the original and even even the remake basically this this girl goes to babysit and somebody keeps calling check on the children. Have you checked on the children? Have you checked on the children? And she calls the cops. The cops are like, well, if they call again, keep them on the line. We'll see if we can figure out where they're calling from. Ends up in both movies, the caller is calling from inside the house. So then the police come and whatnot. The original one, this is the first 20 minutes of the movie and it is brilliantly written. It is intense. It is creepy. It's more of a psychological thriller at this point and actually I put the whole movie more as a psychological thriller. So the first 20 minutes of the movie is this uh, situation. The remake doesn't go beyond that night. It's about the whole experience. The original doesn't tell you what happened to the babysitter. It jumps to many years later, the killer gets out of the psychiatric facility, the cops wants to locate him, they're trying to find him, and he's basically going after the babysitter many years later with her own children. So that's the premise of the original where the remake just focuses on that night. And I actually really liked that variation of it because it was like what happened to, to the babysitter in the the original one they just was like she'll she'll survive she would throw an ordeal but what was the ordeal that you don't know and there's no indication of any PTSD in the original whereas the remake does touch upon that possibility of the character and what she went through. Some things I didn't necessarily like about the remake is they really fluffed out the characters to get through this night. There's a lot of unnecessary characters, therefore there's a lot of unnecessary death. Both of these are an expanded remake of a short film that was done um, obviously before 1979. So the remake, they added a lot of characters. You have a friend randomly showing up, there's a nanny. If there's a nanny, why do they need a babysitter? I mean, come on. And then there's an older brother from a previous marriage who may or may not be coming home that night. And it just didn't, it felt like they were forcing in a lot of characters so that they could kill off those characters before there was the attempt at the babysitter and that whole ordeal with the killer in the house. I didn't like that. It felt forced, it didn't feel natural, and it just, it, it was basically them admitting they had a great story but they didn't have enough to make it a feature length so they went that route. But they could have still made it a feature length, they just didn't have to add all these unnecessary characters. The original feels more like a psychological thriller, whereas the remake felt more like a slasher flick to me, even though it was portrayed as a psychological thriller. And that's actually how the director got the main actress to do the remake, is by selling it to her as a psychological thriller, but 
it was a total to me slasher movie. Overall I do feel that the remake did a really good job of pulling in key components of the original as well as making some of it their own. An interesting side note about the original movie, so it actually was originally given a PG rating because PG-13 didn't exist at this time but the makers of the movie went back and pushed for an R rating with how uncomfortable and disturbing the first 20 minutes can be for the viewer. So they actually had to go in and request to be R rated and reconsidered for that and I thought that was interesting. I didn't know that was a thing that could happen or did happen, but apparently it does and it did for this movie. As far as ratings, I do give them different ratings. The original I do give as a 4. I did enjoy that one more than the remake, which I give a 3. 3 Zombievers. Uh, still, that's pretty high. It was an enjoyable movie for a horror movie. I don't think I would watch it again. I'm glad I only spent about $5 on each movie. But that's all I have to say on these two movies. I hope you enjoyed me talking about both of them, the original versus the remake. It's definitely, they're both worth watching once. I don't think I would want to necessarily watch them again. Stay tuned for what else is in store this month and from my dark heart to yours, have a wonderful day. Please don't die before my next video.